Hello everyone and welcome to my art studio. My name is Miriam. Today I'm going to show you how to paint negative painting. And to begin with, I put masking tape on my paper so I will get this very nice crispy white edge once I have finished the painting. And as you could see before, I listed a material list so you can see what you're going to use for this painting. But the first step is to tape your paper down. And I, I have this watercolor book, so I just put tape all around. Uh, or else you can uh, tape your paper down to a board. And then I begin to make a sketch. And this is a loose sketch, so I don't want to have every detail in. But I do draw in an uneven number of flowers and then I also draw in a lot of leaves. But uh, I'm not very specific with the leaves. It's just leaf shapes and some stems also. So here you can see my sketch. I have left some room uh, on the top of the painting because I want that to be not so much happening up there. And here you see the colors I'm using. Green, Hansa Yellow and Violet. And I am using my White Knight watercolors. So the next step is that you wet your paper. And you can use a large size brush or a flat brush. It's up to you what you prefer. And then I begin to drop in some colors on the paper. And I begin with the Hansa Yellow. And I make sure to hit the flowers with the yellow color. But I don't mind that the other colors flow into the flowers. That's completely okay. And now I'm adding in some green and some purple. And I'm just allowing everything to flow together. And I'm using my brush to help the colors flow. And once your painting is completely dry, you're going to the next step. And to begin with, I make a very watery green mix. And I use the green and the yellow and mix them together in my mixing tray. And then I begin to paint in some of the leaves in this color. And you might think, well, weren't we supposed to paint negative around the leaves? Yes, but I do want to put some color on top of the leaf, uh, leaves to begin with. So this is a very watery mix, but I just want to enhance the leaves a little bit with some color. And then afterwards we will paint the negative space. I often work with the negative painting like this because else it can be very uh, too light. In my opinion, the colors can be too light. So I do uh, put some color on leaves and on flowers as well uh, before I paint in the negative space. And now I'm mixing up some more color and I'm using my green, adding some water to make the mix quite watery. And then I go in with a darker green, still a watery mix, but a darker green. And then I paint some of the leaves in this color as well. As you can see here, I just work my way through the painting. And I'm only working on the uh, leaves at the moment. I'm not painting in any negative space yet. And I will continue like this and uh, also mix a darker green where I mix the green and the purple so the color will get a little bit darker. And then I paint in some more leaves. And I believe that is what I'm going to do now. Yes, I take the green color and put in some of the purple. So we are only using these three colors, Hansa Yellow and Green and Violet in this painting. But we can mix them together and get some very nice shades of color. And then I continue to paint the leaves. And I make sure there's a variation of a very light green color, a medium color, and a darker green color. But still using a watery mix. 
and here I've just painted in a leaf in a uh, even lighter color of green because I feel the painting needed a lighter green color as well. So I just mixed that and put that in. And it's good to look at your painting as you go along and see what you need in different places. And here in this corner we have a lot of the violet colors. So I will be painting the leaves violet. And this will look like it's a shadow area. Uh, because Also because the color is a cool color. And uh, this is how it is when you paint uh, the warm colors will uh, catch your eye and the cool colors will look like they're a little bit in the background so uh, once you paint in we begin to paint the negative space it's also important to think about what you want to step in the background so that's a little tip for you Colors do things <laughs> and it's the same if the color is very light they will step forward in the painting and dark colors will step back in the painting. And now I'm beginning to paint in the negative space. And I'm starting off with quite a dark mix of the green color. And now I go around the leaves and paint the negative space. And you can see more and more the stems are coming up in the painting. Because you paint around it. And here I'm painting around the petals of the flower. And I'm using a purple and you could use the colors in the background you did in your wet wash to guide you to where you want to put your colors you don't have to if you don't want to but you can experiment with that uh, I quite like to work like that um, it's very exciting to see what happens on the paper that way um, but now I'm yeah, working around the shapes of the petals and the leaves. And yeah, it's uh, take your time with it and use a small size brush. And yeah, use what you think works the best. Some in some areas quite a pointy brush is very nice to use and in some areas a more round brush can be nice to use. So yeah, it's good to have a selection of different brushes in your collection when you're working with uh, watercolors. And also like this where we are painting very small areas and being careful not to go in and hit the leaves so but the good thing working like this is that if you get some paint on your leaf you can just uh, correct it with a darker color because the leaf is in a lighter color And here I'm painting around a stem or a grass and uh, we're going up into the background where we don't have a lot of leaves and so on. So I put paint around the grass and then I um, soften the edges with clean water. And I do the same working around the flower you see here and then I just blend uh, the color out into the background um, that will look quite nice and yeah as I said you blend it with the background and here I'm just going around the flower with a green color and down a stem and then I will blend you can see here I have blended 
uh, the color in and into the background. And here I'm just adding some more color around this space. So you have to take a look at your painting and see where you have some edges that needs extra color. Um, so it's a good thing to start with uh, not too dark a color, but of course darker than the leaves are. And then you can always add more color as you continue with the painting. And that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just going around to see if there are any edges that disappears uh, on the flower, no, on the leaves. So, and if I think they look like they have disappeared, I put some paint around and uh, then I just blend in or perhaps even make the area a little bit darker all over. And you can also still paint in some extra leaves, um, like I'm doing here. You can see how I do that here. And I think it's very nice in this sort of painting that you have some very light areas, but also some very dark areas. That's uh, really pretty, I think. And here I'm just cleaning my watercolor, there's some green in it and, and now I want to have a, a very clean yellow without any green or purple in it. So I mix that in my palette because I want to add some more colors to the flowers. The flowers are the focal points in the painting, so I choose to give them some more detail than the rest of the painting and uh, to begin with I've made this watery mix of the yellow and I begin to drop that in on all the leaves uh, or petals of the flowers and I will do that on all the flowers uh, and you can see I've done that here and now I am mixing some green because I saw an edge that was disappearing so I add in some green around the petal here. Now I've mixed up a light green and again I want to enhance an edge. So I go in with the light green. And this is a leaf that's, that's sitting under the flower and I'm just making it a little bit darker to make the flower pop some more. And I'm picking up paint directly from the pan and I'm painting in some stamens in the middle of the flower. And I'm using a light green to do that. And I'm going to do that on all the flowers. I really want the flowers to have some more details than the rest of the painting because they are the focal point. And now I'm using a size 2 brush and I'm painting again in the middle of the flowers and I'm doing painting in some dots and I'm using a green color to do that. 
there are some shadow areas here in the middle of the flower and they will seem to be green greenish and then there's this uh, grass here and it's not very visible so i decided to make the leaf a bit darker so i have made a watery green mix and then i just give this leaf another layer of paint this will make the grass straw pop some more and now it's time to remove the masking tape I'm quite pleased with how the painting looks now so I take my hairdryer and I soften the glue on the masking tape and yeah remove it this really helps so that the paper won't tear and now i could see that uh, the color has run underneath the masking tape so i want to see if i can get some of the color off and i try to use my brush to do the job but it's not working very well so Instead, I grab my sponge. This is quite a handy thing to have when you paint with watercolors. And then I wet it, the sponge, and then I go along the edge and just rub the paper. And this is this is working quite good. And uh, it's also, I think, because my paper is 100% cotton paper. Um, be careful not to begin to tear the paper, but you, you can be a little bit rough and yeah this really helped uh, me get the, those nice clean white edges and i continue all the way around and yeah here i see the finished painting i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that i will see you again in another video remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to get notice of more videos from me be well and bye for now